Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. There is a ton of excitement and anticipation as we get closer and closer to the RDNA free unveiling, which is taking place in early November. NVIDIA have already given us a preview of what its vision for the future of computer graphics will look like, of course, with RTX 40, revealing such cool technologies as DLSS 3, uh, SER, and honestly, the architecture itself, that is Lovelace, does seem to have a ton of potential. I'll be delving a lot further into these technologies over the next couple of days on the channel. I've been doing a lot of analysis, especially now that I've been given a press briefing. But RDNA 3, I think, has captivated a lot of imagination, not just because of the fact that it's chiplet-based design, but I think that AMD actually has a pretty good shot at competing against NVIDIA this time around. Now, sure, I don't necessarily know how it's going to stack up in terms of performance. Honestly, I suggest you all wait for benchmarks on that. But AMD doesn't need to compete in exactly the same manner as NVIDIA to be extremely successful. And we know, of course, that there is Narve 31, 32, as well as 34. And in this video, I want to discuss a couple of very intriguing rumors concerning the RDNA 3 series and, well, some other stuff regarding release schedule. Let's get into it. So let's start things out with an article from Foreignx.com. You can see basically that this is a commit. This is uh, basically driver stuff from RDNA 3 going into uh, Linux. Basically speaking, the VGPRs here have seen a significant increase in size. They are basically increased by 50%. Now, I'm sure that this is part of one of many changes for RDNA 3. And to my understanding, there is a considerable number of changes for RDNA 3, particularly when it comes to the handling of ray tracing. I can't get anything super solid at the moment, but again, I have been told that ray tracing performance on RDNA 3 is significantly better than RDNA 2. That honestly does make sense because let's face it, they can't have the same ray tracing performance, but then just, you know, turn raster up to 11. It just wouldn't make any sense. Now, NVIDIA have had a lot of technologies which are being employed for the improvement of ray tracing performance ultimately for example ser micro meshes and so on again i'll be going much deeper into this in my uh, lovelace analysis which is coming in the next couple of days i've basically written all of the scripts right now so i'm just notarizing things and getting things ready for editing but um I suspect that RDNA 3 is going to have a lot of cool technologies as well now to my personal understanding uh, and this could be incorrect, Navi 31 and 32 have both seen their vector register sizes increased by 50% over RDNA 2, whereas Phoenix and Navi 33, those vector registers are the same size. Now, coincidentally, one of my sources actually came and was just uh, talking to me about this a couple of days ago, but just because of all the craziness that's been going on right now, just in general with, you know, RTX 40 and so on, I just didn't have enough time to verify it with another source. And then obviously it's now popped up with foreignx.com. So I think we can say that it's a pretty good chance that it's pretty accurate given, again, it's official commit from AMD's engineering teams. So the increase that we're looking at here, 50%, is not insubstantial. It's actually a really big deal, particularly when it comes to things like shader optimization. Again, because I'm sure that this is part of a much wider strategy for RDNA 3. It's very difficult to know what AMD's full plans are. Obviously, there have been a lot of leaks that myself and many others have put out, but I don't think we're anywhere near a complete picture yet for how RDNA 3 is going to change. Even with all the RTX 40 stuff, we still didn't have a full picture, despite the fact that there were a ton of specifications and lots of other stuff that was leaked. So I think we're in a very si similar situation here. I also want to mention that to my understanding thus far, Narve 31 is going to be the 7900 series, Narve 32 is going to be the 7800 and 7700 series, and then 33 is going to be the 76 and 7500 series respectively. As for the release schedule, well, I don't really have any updates here. It's pretty much the same thing as what you guys have known like a hundred times over at this point. Narve 31, of course, launches by the end of the year. Again, official reveal in November. Uh, AMD, I believe, have even said in public that they're going to release the high end first. The Narve 33 laptop is going to launch. And that is probably going to be around CES time at the very least for the reveal. Then after that will be the desktop for Narve 33. And then we're going to see the laptop and desktop launch for Narve 32. This is going to take a while longer. 
Uh, I don't really suspect we're going to see that for at least six months, probably a little bit longer actually for Narve 32. I keep hearing different release schedules for Narve 32. I've been told that it's going to be late spring by one person and possibly even sometime in summer by someone else. So I wouldn't really put too much faith. I don't think the uh, development has gone as far as Narve 31 or 33 to my personal understanding. And I could be wrong on this, but I think Narve 33 was delayed because of, well, the supply chain stuff. You guys know what's happened, you know, with the flood of inventory. And that's obviously one of the reasons we've recently seen AMD officially cut the price of the RX 6000 series. I got a couple of uh, press emails actually about that from AMD themselves, although I just didn't cover it because, well, you know, I'm sure you know everyone read about it um and honestly i think it just makes sense for amd to delay narve 33 i think it's gonna be very interesting to see how amd actually um fights nvidia i think um just based on some murmurs although my let's just say i'm not super confident about this i think it's very likely we're only going to see the ultra high-end cards launch first and i have heard that there is a significant drop-off between like the halo skews and the ones slightly below that again though specifications like look how quickly the specifications for rtx 40 seem to change and yeah i'm sure that amd are not doing things much differently to nvidia here i don't know what the prices of uh, narve 31 is going to be at this point personally speaking i don't think they're going to undercut nvidia that much although of course it's going to depend heavily on performance i personally think that it's not like amd are going to be much 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 slower than nvidia so i suspect they're going to be priced still kind of high i don't think you're going to be getting like a like a 7900 or whatever for like you know two dollars fifty it's not going to be the price of chewing gum i think it's still going to be a halo premium card i just don't think it's going to be as expensive as like a 1490 and god knows just seriously who the hell knows how much the 1490 ti is going to cost let me know guys down below what you predict the 1490 ti is going to cost I think there's two strategies that NVIDIA could go with depending on the release timings of all of this. The first is that they could basically reduce the price of the 4090 down to, I don't know, like a modest amount, like, you know, a cheap amount, let's say $1,399, nice and cheap for the 4090. And then they could put the, uh, you know, the 4090 Ti out at like, what, 1800 bucks, pure guess. Or the other possibility is that they could keep the price of the 4090 as is, and then they could release the 4090 Ti even more expensive, like 2,000 bucks, whatever. Again, the amount of RAM on this thing has been like subject of a ton of debate for the 4090 Ti. It's like some people are saying it's 24 gigabytes, others are saying it's 48. Honestly, I don't know. I haven't heard one way or the other. So it's going to be really interesting to see how AMD actually respond to all of this. And finally, Zen 4, of course, gets an official revealing tomorrow by reviewers. I think there's a lot of excitement and anticipation to see what Ryzen 7000 can bring to the table. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with BIOS updates for both it and intel's 13th generation processors i'm personally kind of hyped to see what zen 4 uh, can do with the vcash variants that's my personal thing at this point i'm going to be very interested to see how it scales with vcash um but yeah just a quick update we actually have some additional benchmarks i want to give credit to videocards.com for this i'm not going to go over all of the specifications and uh, performance numbers because quite frankly i will be here for quite some time but basically speaking uh we have the 7950x scoring about 2100 points as compared to around 1600 points of the 5950x using video cards as numbers when it comes to single core 37400 for the uh, multi-thread compared to 26220 291 excuse me so that's roughly speaking about uh, 11,000 points additional for the multi and if we go down the product stack to the eight core processors uh, 1975 for single versus 1593 for the 5800 and uh, 15,310 versus 19,387 that's seen the bench r23 and the numbers can also be said to be pretty similar across the board for Cinebench r20 the single thread performance drops off less actually with the 7950 going down the stack but roughly speaking you're looking at just around 130 points higher for the 7950x over the 5950x 
and in multi-thread, well, things get kind of messy. We're looking at about 40% uh, additional performance for the uh, 7950X. We are seeing 14,575 points versus about 10,098. Again, I think Zen 4 is going to be an interesting platform. I think that there are a lot of people who are looking to upgrade. I think if you've, you know, I've actually been messaged by a number of people who kind of sold a lot of their PC hardware when the GPU prices were like, you know, all the way up there. And it's kind of difficult to blame people when they could have gotten, you know, a ridiculous amount of cash at the time when mining was a thing for like their 2080 or their 5700 XT or whatever, because miners were basically buying anything. It's like, does it have a display signal? No. Does it overheat? Yes. Does it crash occasionally? Yes. Is it a Vega 56? Yes. Do you need to put more power into it to get it even running at stock? Yes. Okay, I'll buy it. That's like, I'll give you a thousand bucks for that. It was it was actually getting kind of crazy at one point or another. I'm sure you guys remember like the, the, the dark times in PC gaming. And uh, so now I think a lot of people cashed out at that point especially because the you know the new generation of consoles was a thing i think a lot of people <laughs> managed to buy an xbox or a playstation 5 for the shortages uh, i think a lot of people were just like you know what i'm out i'm done I'm, I'm buying a playstation or an xbox in the short term but now obviously you know with the new generation of hardware i think now is a pretty good time to jump in i think especially given the prices of zen 3 as well as the 12th generation have gone down significantly it's going to be very interesting to see what people do uh, i'm going to be very curious to see what is the best bang for buck systems after amd announce rdna 3 i think it's a little early to say at the moment and make build guides because who the balls knows what's going to happen um, you know, with the prices of RDNA 3 and if RTX 40 is going to see a price cut, what's going to happen in terms of CPUs? You know, there's been a lot of leaks in terms of the pricing for Intel, for example, and we've seen, of course, tons of other bits and pieces with the motherboard prices. But ultimately, guys, it's going to be a very interesting uh, couple of months, I think, in PC gaming. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, it's YouTube. You know what to do. Leave a like and a subscribey. Uh, don't know why you leave a subscriber. You have to subscribe. You can't leave a subscription. I don't know. Sounded good. With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.